Hey folks, Turbine Guy coming back at you. Now today, we are going to go through the Order for Mandatory Injunction signed by the Honorable James Moore in Court File 27 CV 22-1089, County of Hennepin versus Paul Berkowitz, Ben Wilson, and Superior Dreams, LLC. After the hearing on plaintiff's motion for a temporary injunction, the court ordered the parties to engage in mediation and to report back to the court as to the results of the mediation and, in absence of agreement, to provide the court with their respective positions as to how to most safely, legally, and quickly move the yacht, Superior Dreams, I think he meant C-note, from its present spot at the public landing. The parties did not reach agreement. The case is now before the court on the post-mediation submissions of the parties required by the court's orders of February 4th, 2022 and February 24th, 2022. Since the date of the latter order, defendants have filed an answer and counterclaim, but no additional evidence or argument has been filed with the court on the pressing issue of how to most safely, legally, and quickly remove the yacht. Superior Dreams, and once again, I think he means C-Note, from the area of the public landing. Based on the court's files, records, and proceedings herein, the court makes the following. Order. Within 10 days of the date of this order, defendants shall move the yacht, Superior Dreams, once again, C-note, in full accordance with their plan submitted to the court post-mediation. Defendants are authorized to move the barricades that Hennepin County placed around the yacht to facilitate moving the yacht. The yacht will be attended by the defendants or their contractors, at all times after the barricades are moved, the attached memorandum is incorporated herein, March 17, 2022, Judge James Amor. All right, now on to the memorandum. The county has invoked the court's jurisdiction and seeks a temporary injunction to abate a nuisance. A temporary injunction is an extraordinary and equitable remedy. Its purpose is to preserve the status quo until education of the case on its merits. Temporary injunction should be granted only when it is clear that the rights of a party will be irreparably injured before a trial on the merits is held. The party seeking the injunction must establish that their legal remedy is not adequate and that the injunction is necessary to prevent great and irreparable harm. Failure to demonstrate irreparable harm is generally by itself a sufficient ground for denying temporary injunctive relief. The Minnesota Supreme Court has set forth five factors to consider in determining whether or not a temporary injunction should be issued. And by the way, that's called Dahlberg. That's what they all call it when they talk about injunctions or decree. The grant of a temporary injunction neither establishes the law of the case nor constitutes an education of the issues on the merits. So he's going to go through the factors now. Great and irreparable injury. As a threshold issue, the county must show that it will suffer great and irreparable injury in the absence of an injunction. The county postulates that this threshold is met by the danger posed by the way the yacht is precariously perched on the land that is open to the public. The court has previously expressed its concern that the yacht and or trailer holding it may topple and cause injury. The threat of harm meets the injury threshold of Cherney or Cherney. The nature and background of the relationship between the parties pre-existing the dispute. Here, Hennepin County is a property holder, owner holding and maintaining land for the benefit and use of the public at large. Defendants are trespassers who have overstayed their welcome on the public land. Arguably, the county is also a regulator and defendants allegedly scofflaws. Ooh, there's a fun word. This factor, on the whole... Ways in favor of a temporary injunction. The bottom line is that defendants left a large, potentially unstable object on public property without claim of right to do so. C. The harm to be suffered by plaintiff if the temporary injunction is denied as compared to that inflicted on the defendants if the injunction is issued. The potential harm here is immense, but it seems to have somehow been lost on the bickering about who knows more about moving big boats on and off Lake Minnetonka. The county claims, and the court agrees, that it's quite possible that the yacht will fall and hurt somebody. If that is the basis for the county's request for injunctive relief, then the sole focus of its evidence and argument should be on moving the yacht quickly to a safe place. 
But that is not what the county argues. Instead, the county argues that the yacht weighs much more than what the defendants claim and that moving it on public roadways requires extraordinary measures involving a crane, a new trailer to assure compliance with roadway trailering regulations. The county's plan will take longer to implement than the defendant's plan. It will cost $70,000. I'll throw a plus in there for the judge. The county's arguments are incongruous. Its focus seems to be on the danger to the pavement in the event of an accident during a move. That concern, though real, does not amount to great and irreparable injury that could support a temporary injunction. The county seems to have lost sight of the fact that defendants proposed to move the yacht in the middle of the night at slow speed with escort to a location a few short blocks from where it stands now. Is this a question of imminent danger of collapse or a question of adherence to weight restrictions? Still, despite the county's misplaced arguments, the court is concerned that the yacht needs to be moved from the public landing soon. Predictably, it is starting to get warmer. The boating season will soon be upon us. The yacht needs to be moved so the public can safely enjoy access to the lake afforded by the county's landing and parking lot. On the other side of the equation, any harm to defendants occasioned by an order to move the yacht is entirely of their own making. Defendants have always planned to remove the yacht from the lake and to repurpose it elsewhere. They do not intend to push a yacht back into the lake at ice out and thereby avoid storage costs that they might otherwise have incurred at a local marina. The yacht is out of the lake and is headed somewhere else. How it gets to its ultimate destination is not today's concern. The only concern is getting it to a place where it can be safely stored. Defendants' actions that led to the present situation are analyzed below, but on this factor, the court finds that the harm they might suffer as a result of temporary junction is negligible. Hmm. L uh, D, the likelihood that one party or the other will prevail on the merits when the facts uh, situation in view to the light established precedence. The factor counsels in favor of a temporary injunction. In the end, the county is entitled to have its yacht, the, the yacht, moved from its property, and to that extent, it is likely to prevail in this litigation. It is really only a question of the timing that calls for the potential exercise of the court's injunctive power. The parties agree that the goal now is to get the yacht off the public land and away from the lake without dropping it in some innocent bystander or spilling fuel in the lake. The question is, how do we accomplish this? The question of who should pay for it, while important to the parties, is unimportant to the court in the present analysis. For the purpose of this Dahlberg factor, there is no disagreement. The aspects of the fact situation, if any, which permit or require consideration of public policy expressed in the statutes, state and federal. Hmm. This Dahlberg factor is perhaps the least underutilized. It is a rare case where the public policy predominates over the interest of the private parties involved in the litigation. But here we find a unique case where public policy and the underlying interest of the public dominate the analysis. Plaintiff argues that the yacht was dangerously removed from the lake and precariously stored on its property. The court agrees. Defendants offer a counter-narrative. They acted with laudable dispatch to address an older yacht that was taking on water in December and pulled it from the lake just in time to avoid an environmental crisis. Defendants' short-sighted and narrow-minded view of the facts find no purchase with the court. Defendants' arguments cast themselves as heroes in the drama this early stage of litigation, the court sees no reason to grant them that status. Defendants had a yacht on Lake Minnetonka that they knew was old, that needed care, and predictably a safe place to winter. On the record before the court, they failed to take reasonable and necessary steps to address any of those predictable issues. Instead, when the predictable happened, they jury-rigged a way to pull a yacht from the lake with no apparent plan on what would happen next. Now they claim to be experts in such matters, but the history of this case belies assertion. F. The administrative burdens involved in judicial supervision and enforcement of the temporary decree. The final Dahlberg factor weighs slightly in opposition to the grant of temporary injunction. Given the petulant and uncompromising positions of both parties in this case, the administrative burden on the court in enforcing this order is likely to be weighty. The court expects that, at a minimum, the parties will be back before the court with disagreements about how to implement this order. The burden on the court, though, pales in comparison to harm to the public if the court fails to step in to the breach and orders that common sense prevails. Get the yacht moved, says the Honorable Judge James A. Moore. 
Well, there were a few notes on page four here that, that bear going through. Let's start with number two. The court notes defendants' argument that they are not trespassers but captives, as will be seen. The court finds little merit in the, in the defendant's claim. The present stalemate is a predictable outcome of defendants' irresponsible underlying behavior. Three, the county asserts claim that it would be illegal for defendants to transport the yacht on public roads on the current trailer. The record does not establish whether any portion of the route from where the yacht sits to where the defendants hope to take it falls on the county roads. If so, then the county may indeed be a regulator. If not, then the county's claim of impending illegal transport is a claim that they lack standing to pursue in this civil litigation. Defendants, of course, take issue with the county's interpretation of the applicable weight limits and also with the purported weight of the yacht itself. The many factual issues presented here are not determinative of the issue of whether a temporary injunction should issue. And the court leaves them for another day. Four, again, the court notes that defendants will argue necessity, but as will be seen, the court is skeptical of a claim of necessity that is predicted on underlying negligence. The risk of harm to the public is not dependent on whether the yacht weighs 45 tons or 29 tons. Well, now that we've gotten through all of this, it sure seems that Judge Moore has really put a solid effort into, I guess, protecting the county from, from this just silly litigation. He does call them out. Man, you, you didn't even prove you own the road. You know, and, and, and yes, of course, they're likely to prevail on an injunction to move the boat. But what does that mean? They didn't specifically have anything in there. Here's what we're going to, this all had to kind of like be given in afterwards. There was little plan. So I also find definite humor in the words the judge uses, scoff laws and, you know, talking about the defendants being irresponsible and all this, even though he admits there may have been an environmental disaster. Quite interesting to me how, how Hard, as I said, Judge Moore worked to make this look like the county was winning, but right at the end said, hey, let common sense prevail, move the damn boat. Well, I threw the damn in. But that's what the turbine guy's been saying this whole time. Common sense prevail, which means to the turbine guy that the county has been acting on a minimal common sense schedule and, and that maybe, just maybe, this could have ended a long time ago. There you have the order, folks. Turbine Guy, signing off.